Thanks for listening to the Art Tactic Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Green. As we've learned and heard more about NFTs, we're regularly intrigued to see if the NFT world and the art world will co-mingle, and if so, to what extent. We are already seeing that to a small degree. For example, auction houses have NFT sales regularly, but we still haven't seen too much crossover when it comes to artists or collectors. So we wanted to chat with an NFT company whose sales platform is focused on fine art. So in this week's episode of the podcast, we chat with Audrey O, oh, co-founder and CEO of TR Lab, a creative production studio and NFT sales platform focused on fine art. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Thanks so much for listening. Audrey, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be on. Absolutely. So I think a great starting point is if you could tell us what exactly is TR Lab and how do you see TR Lab fitting in the expanding NFT space that we're reading so much about? Of course. So TR Lab, as you mentioned, is an NFT platform. Our mission is to pioneer a new way to conceptualize and collect fine art. The full name of TR Lab is actually Tabula Rasa Lab. And tabula rasa is a Latin expression meaning blank slate. As you mentioned, we are a creative production studio, NFT cell platform, and virtual community for collectors and artists. We offer full service and to an experience for both artists, foundations, institutions, and collectors. We definitely do work with more traditional artists with a focus of bringing them into the space, but we also work with digital artists and other partners to deeper engage uh, with the more NFT native audience. Uh, I really believe that Tear Lab occupies a unique space among all NFT platforms. We are very much so focused on the art and the artist with a curated approach that prioritizes direct access to, cre- to collectors, long-term value, and also ongoing innovation. I'm happy to share that in January, we announced that we closed uh, our first seed funding round of $4.2 million, which will fuel the next chapter of Tier Labs growth in the NFT space. And we were very happy to be backed by major art collectors, tech investors, and Web3 innovators, uh, which gives us a lot of belief that there is a ringing endorsement in our model and mission and what we're doing that would hopefully shape the future of the NFT art market. And you mentioned there are traditional fine artists leveraging NFTs. There are digital artists leveraging NFTs. I do think it will be very interesting to follow along and see to what extent the traditional fine art world and the NFT world intertwine. How much has that happened already? And what do you think is the potential for it to do so in the future? So I, I firmly believe that it is just the beginning. And it, Adam, it is crazy how much the sentiment has shifted just anecdotally when we found we founded Tier Lab back in last March, and when we were first talking to some institutions and artists in the summer months, it was like NFTs, no effing time for that. And uh, turned to Art Basel, Miami, which is I think where we really saw a different shift, where people were interested in starting to talk to us about what NFTs meant. There's also this transition that I've been monitoring in the traditional art world where the possibilities of nft art is really being discussed with digital artists obviously nfts have been the first time 3d designers and animators have ever been able to make a living as artists and not live off of commission but for traditional artists and institutions entering the space i think it's very important to ask two questions One is, why are you doing an NFT project? What is the purpose of this project? And two is really think about what if. So for all the artists that we've worked with, we very very much so focus on both conceptually and also in terms of the NFT project designs. How is this something that could not exist in the traditional art world? How is this different from anything else that has been put out? So for us, our first ever uh, first ever drop back in last July was with artist Tai Guoqiang, who we're also very happy to be doing our third project with. But at that time, Tai was most 
excited about the idea of freezing time and making the uncollectible collectible. He loved the idea that you know with blockchain, he could sell and he could sell a moment of his art, essentially the birth moment and the creation of his amazing gunpowder artworks that could never have been captured before, but are central to his art form. So we like to work with artists that are thinking very differently uh, and very uh, thinking with integrity about what being in the NFT space means for the next phase of their art. I also believe that the NFT mar art market is still very early on and there is no time to proclaim a one size fits all position on how to produce or launch or sell or collect NFT art. And I think that the traditional art world is starting to come around to that a lot more where they're interested in introducing innovative approaches to different aspects of the creation and production process instead of you know, the conversation last year being more focused on artists being able to have permanent provenance and um, instead we're focusing on how can you enable a community to co-create alongside you and how can you add a really additional layer uh, to how people would understand your art. When I look at the overall NFT space, I think there's a lot of potential, but it does seem to be becoming very saturated with so many platforms, products, and art, even artists emerging. Would you agree with that? And what ultimately do you think it'll take for something to survive and be relevant in the future within this space? I, I love that question. I think the NFT space is extremely saturated, but it's still going to become more saturated as you know, more people find out about the space and want to jump, jump in with new projects. I would say that the word curation is very overused as, as different platforms and projects try to distinguish from one another. We also like to say that we care about curation, but we really use it to explain that we want to continue to be very selective in the projects that we pursue. We don't intend to curate projects based on any one taste maker's aesthetic or you know, a record of past sale prices. Our goal is really to present projects that fit with our core mission and that provide a great collaborative experience for the artists that we work with. And of course, create lasting value for our members and collectors. One of the things that we pride ourselves on as a platform is that the artists that we work with want to come back and work with us again. I think that's something that we feel we feel very proud about and that we want to hold on to. As I was saying uh, about the NFT art market still being very early on, I think that innovation is a very strong key pillar that Tierra Lab tries to hold on to where NFTs can be interacted with and viewed in ways that transcend the capabilities of traditional media and the possibilities are really endless and haven't been really fully explored yet. So I think the saturation is good. I think it makes it harder to become successful where if you just a celebrity or a big name entering the space doesn't mean that much because there are so many people doing so. How we like to think about that is that we like to really stay updated on all the new developments that are happening on the technical side. But we also like to think about how art can really inspire the technology to do projects that haven't been done before. So for example, going in a bit deeper into our current project with Ty, it is called Your Daytime Fireworks. And it's really an immersive NFT art experience where we're inviting collectors on a journey of discovery unlike any in the field of contemporary art and could only be made possible through the evolution of NFT art. I think Ty does an amazing job here, so I will try to quote him on this, where he, uh, from his perspective, he wants collectors to follow in his footsteps as they undertake their own exploration and participation. He wants collectors to co-create with him to be him essentially and feel the uncertainty as well as the unexpected joy he experiences as he set up fireworks in different regions or under different weather conditions across the globe. So what that means for us, while we're brainstorming and deeply collaborating with artists to bring this to life is we have a specially designed Highlander, which is a kind of a pun on calendar that will run twice a day starting on April 25th over a period of 45 days. And every day we will reveal a, a fictional date, a fictional weather condition, and a worldwide location. 
And as a collector, after you have a firework packet, you get to decide when you want to essentially set up your firework packet, and that also impacts the outcome of the art. So for example, let's say on April 25th, it is January 1st, it's sunny in Mexico. By looking deeply into handbook and materials that Ty will provide in terms of how the factors that he needs to consider when he sets up fireworks, you as a collector will also get to decide when you want to set up the fireworks and that will determine the ultimate artwork that you will receive. Because of that, the rarity of each final artwork is actually completely de determined by fellow collectors instead of the artists or us. I also want to mention that there are a few surprise Easter eggs hidden to celebrate landmark artistic moments in Ty's career. But what I love about this project is that the way that we designed it makes it a collecting experience unlike any that you can have in the traditional art world. And it's also about integrated education where you really need to learn more about Thai to think about what kind of firework effects you would want and when you would want to set things off. So I think going back to the question, I think that the saturation is a good thing. It is challenging to stand out and it's harder to be successful, but it also requires people to be more thoughtful about their approach as to what they're doing in the space, especially as someone who is a traditional artist or institution coming in as a, a first time project, uh, project developer. Something you mentioned earlier is the fundraising you've done for TR Lab and you had some significant investors, including some participants from the traditional fine art world. What do you think is their motivation to invest in both the NFT space and specifically in TR Lab? So I will answer why I think there is motivation to invest in the NFT space first. I think that a lot of uh, art collectors and um, some of our partners and investors, such as Pace Gallery, are seeing that the next generation of art collectors is already engaging with art through a digital first approach. And so there's a lot of interest, especially with younger collectors, where people care equally, if not more, about the digital art that they own, as well as the physical art pieces. Why I hope people are interested in TR Lab and believe in our mission is that we are thinking about NFTs very much so from an art first standpoint. And at the same time, because of our positioning, it's we really want to act as an entry point to greater engagement with artists, both traditional and digital and to define what fine art collecting can become in this new digital era. A statistic that I would love to share is for part one of the project that we just released with Ty, we had something called a golden ticket. And uh, this is something where as a collector, you would need to go through, uh, you would need to go through a quiz about Ty's gunpowder artworks and his life and how he thinks about his medium. If you, answer out of the five qu randomized questions, if you answer more than three correctly, then you're able to mint, uh, which basically means collect a golden ticket, which gives you earlier entrance into the project, but at the same time proves that you did spend time learning a bit more about Thai. For this part of the project, after some analysis that we've done internally, we have around 40% of the 4,600 plus uh, people who uh, who collected this golden ticket NFT within 12 hours that have less than 10 NFTs in their wallet. And I think that really goes to show that the way that we're positioned allows us to kind of really do bridge the digital and traditional fine art worlds and allows us to attract audiences that are both deeper in the NFT space but are also easy for you know, new first-time collectors to come in who are potentially more interested in art and then come to explore and um, become interested in NFT collecting overall. When I think more about the NFT space, there does seem to be an educational and curatorial void when it comes to the actual art, something that's quite robust in the traditional fine art world. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing to try to fill this void and how crucial is education and curation in this space to ensure the long-term sustainability of NFTs? Uh, we believe it to be extremely crucial. I think we're particularly focused on integrated education. I like to call it play to learn, <laughs> uh, which is kind of a play on uh, what is very 
a very popular phrase in the NFT gaming wor our world, play to earn. But how we like to think about it is that in the NFT space, there's obviously a lot of focus on projects that are hot. You also see a lot of headlines about projects that are making a lot of money, whether for the creators or for definitely there are at times bad actors in the space just because there's so much money. What we want to do with these integrated education is to avoid that and also to really celebrate the art and the artist. We want people, collectors that are coming to Tier Lab to buy artworks, not because Tier Lab is co-producing it or because we're involved in servicing artists to produce it, but because they're spending time to get to know artists at a deeper level that they haven't been able to before. So for example, the gold ticket that we mentioned, uh, collectors had actually had to read through an A to Z almanac on Ty and his life to be able to answer the questions properly. What is funny is that we've been working with Ty for a very long time on this project. And I had thought, you know, I wouldn't need to read through the almanac very closely that I would be able to get five out of five. But I had to take the quiz twice because some of the answers were so obscure. And it was really answered that questions that you had to do deeper research into in order to find the right answer to. So the fact that this many people within 12 hours were able to get the correct answers and then go through with collecting this firework, uh, this golden ticket really shows that there is interest in on the collector side to, to put effort into spending time on art and artists and wanting to learn deeper about the project that you're investing or collecting into. I also think from the artist side, you need to think about the fact that you're engaging with a whole new audience. So community is some other another metric that's very commonly mentioned among NFT platforms. For Chair Lab in particular, we have grown exponentially in the last six months, but it's mostly filled by direct access to our artists. So for example, for Ty, he actually sends a daily good morning uh, to his Exploding the Self collectors, which is a limited edition series that he did for us back in September. We also have book clubs to do with different AI or other interesting subjects that are coming up. And last but not least, when we were doing one of our last projects, we were doing weekly AMAs, which are essentially Ask Me Anything online interview live streams that allows collectors and people, you know, art fans who could have only liked an artist's photo on Instagram to now better and deeply engage with an artist by directly asking them questions. And so for us, we think ultimately it is very crucial for to think about the long-term sustainability of NFTs and think about education at the same time, because serving both artists and collectors well require much more than just a minting or techno technological solution and a trading platform. We are really thinking about how to seek more meaningful and ongoing connection between artists and their followers and our whole production process and how we put together a project are really to do to create this environment where hopefully art enthusiasts are finding a level playing field to engage with the artists and artworks that they love. Yeah, I think it's great to hear the work you're doing on this front. I think it's highly crucial. So lastly, tell us more about some of the projects you have coming up on the platform. What details can you share with us? Uh, yes, for sure. So on March 25th, we announced our new project. It's our biggest project yet uh, with Ty called Your Daytime Fireworks. And the pre-sale is actually starting on Thursday, April 14th. The public sale is starting on April 20th. And as I mentioned, April 25th is where these, uh, the essentially the reveal of the fireworks began, where as collectors, you'll get to, with firework packets and educational materials in hand, you'll be able to follow Ty alongside a very immersive journey and set up your own daytime fireworks. It'll be going until early June. And so we're very excited for people to join in. And hopefully, you know, it may be a lot of people's first time collecting NFTs. And we're hoping for an enjoyable and easy experience for a lot of our first time collectors in the space. Audrey, thanks so much again for coming onto the podcast and chatting with us about TR Lab, as well as your interesting perspective on how the NFT world and the art world are 
intertwining and coming together. If our listeners want to learn more about TR Lab, where can they find more details? Yep, it's tierlab.com. And you can also find us on Twitter at tierlab underscore. And uh, feel free to subscribe to our email newsletter, uh, as well as our Instagram, where we do want to keep everyone updated. Perfect. Thanks so much again, Audrey. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Adam. It was wonderful talking to you, and I really enjoyed our conversation.